and today we will be starting the series off with DC Rebirth Batman issue 21, The Button. We start the issue out watching a hockey game. It's all tied up with one minute left to go. It's the Gotham Blades versus the Metropolis Mammoths. The game is being watched by a group of inmates at the Arkham Asylum, where a female prisoner shouts and screams, This is the one where they kill him! Pleading her case that she can't stop them, that he's going to die. There's no Superman in sight, and the Legion will die. That he's going to die. We cut to the Batcave, where Bruce Wayne is studying the mysterious bloody smiley face pin that he found in the walls of the Batcave at the beginning of DC Rebirth, shortly after Wally Rest returned. We know that the bloody pin once belonged to the comedian from The Watchmen. Bruce is also watching the hockey game on the monitors in the Batcave. The game gets rough, and two players who have a history together get into a fight on the ice. It's Taylor vs. Shuster, with each throwing punches till Shuster knocks Taylor down to the ground and won't stop smashing Taylor's face in. Everybody pleads trying to stop him. Shuster keeps smashing Taylor's face in. Blood gets all over the ice. The refs are unable to stop him, and it seems to be the worst. Just then, Batman walks away from the screens and flicks the pin onto a nearby table next to where he has Psycho Pirate's mask and turns away. Then the mask seems to react to the bloody button, and sparks of lightning zap Batman, knocking him down to the ground. He looks up and sees another Batman, who reaches out to Bruce, saying his name. Bruce grabs the other Batman's hand, asking, Father? He stands up, and nothing is there. Batman then sends a comlink to Barry Allen, the Flash, telling him about the button's reaction to Psycho Pirate's mask. Barry telling Bruce that he's fighting an invasion of samurais, asking Batman if this can wait. Batman, knowing the Flash can handle multitasking, continues anyway, saying, The radiation on the button has peaked and caused a speed force reaction. The Flash then jokingly says, Alright Bruce, I got about 37 of these guys left or so. I should be there in about a minute. Batman then jokes he didn't expect the Flash to be early, and just then, crack! Bruce is punched in the face and knocked down to the ground. Quite the reverse, actually. It's the reverse Flash, Eobard Thawne, from the Flashpoint Paradox, as he has recently been resurrected and returned in the end of The Flash, Sins of the Father, which serves as a setup to this story. Thorn then tells Bruce that he died and should be dead, but something called him back here and brought him here, and that he will now punish Bruce Wayne Batman for Thomas Wayne Batman killing the Reverse Flash during the Flashpoint Paradox timeline. Thorn makes light work of Bruce, throwing lightning-fast punches and tossing Bruce across the Batcave, and then Thorn finds the note that Thomas Wayne from Flashpoint gave Barry to give to Bruce, and Thorne mocks Thomas for the letter and rips it into a million pieces, Bruce screaming out aloud, No! Telling Thorne to leave now as the reverse flash gloats that he can't be touched while blurring. Batman says, You need to be standing on solid ground, and stabs Thorne in the foot, allowing Batman to finally fight back and get in a few punches on Thorne. Then reverse flash yells, You can't win here! As Batman smiles, saying, I'm just buying time. A countdown appears on the panels from 20 seconds counting down till 1. Then Batman, with a bloody smile on his face, laughs out and says, Looks like overtime. The reverse Flash appears to have won the fight, and so he grabs what he came here for, the bloody button. And just then, a bzzz and a white and blue light shines as Thorne's body starts to melt and burn off half his body, turning into flesh, the other bone, turning him into a decayed skeleton. And Thorne's last words screaming that he saw God, God, and then a crack of lightning comes Barry Allen saying he's sorry he's late, he tried to stop the hockey fight, but... Taylor ended up dying. Barry finds Bruce's beaten up body and lying unconscious and sees the decayed body of Eobard Thorne, the reverse Flash. And that ends part one of Batman issue 21 from DC Rebirth, The Button. The Flash 21, The Button Part 2. All art, text, characters, and storylines belong to DC Comics, not me. We start the issue off on top of a rooftop. It's cold and dark and there's a storm brewing. Lightning strikes all around us, and there's an elderly man screaming to the sky, asking where the thunderbolt went, saying he didn't want any of this, pleading and screaming. 
It's the same old man that Wally West tried to use as a tether and told that he needs to find the Justice Society at the very beginning of DC Rebirth. Three guards then grab the old man and ask how he got up here and to tell the nurses to up his meds. He's got a lot of fight in him for an old man. Then the old man kicking and yelling out, We lost the Justice Society. Everyone deals with loss in different ways. At the Batcave, Barry Allen, the Flash, is going over the scene and talking about his first crime scene, his mother's death. It compelled him to become a CSI so he could solve that cold case. He goes on to say that being the Flash isn't what makes him good at being a CSI. It's because he spent the time in the lab and worked for it. He's the best at what he does. Barry sees the intent of every blow thrown by the reverse Flash, noted it seemed more like torture than a simple beating. The Flash looks over the decayed body of Eobard Thawne, a criminal and scientist from the 25th century, and the murderer of the Flash's mother. He hated the Flash so much that he traveled through time to make Flash suffer, calling it Revenge in Reverse. Barry always feared what the Reverse Flash would do next and who he might try to take next from Barry's life. Barry always tried to be ready in case he ever came at him. It's over, Mom, Barry half-heartedly said, knowing that this isn't justice. Whoever killed the Reverse Flash must have had a lot of power, as Thorne had his own unique negative speed force, which he created, allowing him to move freely through time, and at times run faster than Barry himself. There was something odd here as Thorne's decayed body seemed to be covered in Barry's energy, which made Flash question whether a future Flash version of himself may have killed Thorne at some point. Barry rushes over to Alfred and asks if the Batcave's cameras might have caught the action with Alfred telling him the cameras were damaged in the fight, meaning there's only one witness left, Bruce Wayne. As Barry walks into the room where Bruce is resting, he thinks to himself how joining the Justice League finally made him feel like he had friends in life and was a part of something, and yet, whenever he'd talk about science, he felt alone amongst them, aside from Batman, who loved talking over the evidence and going over every case with the Flash. The two of them could talk for hours. Thorne said he saw God, huh? Barry questioned, confused as Eobard Thorne was from the future and a man of science, not of faith. Bruce then tells Barry that to Thorne, the brief moments before his death could have seemed like days for Thorne. He could have traveled across space and time before dying. But why then did he return here of all places, exactly here? Barry questioned, and what was wrong with Thorne's vibrational patterns? Barry and Bruce talk over the case, and then Barry asks what Bruce said he saw when Bruce first contacted the Flash about the button. A ghost, Barry. It was my father, in a bat suit. How could Bruce have known it was him? Barry wonders, and Bruce tells him he'd know his father anywhere. His voice, his presence. He was a man who had a way about him, Bruce says. Barry knows this is Thomas Wayne Batman from the Flashpoint timeline that he created while trying to save his mother. But how could that be? I watched that world be destroyed, Barry says. Bruce tells Barry this isn't all his fault. Someone has been messing with their timeline long before the Flashpoint. They both wonder why Reverse Flash was drawn to the button, and Barry talks about visions he has seen since Wally first returned, and this all began. He mentions seeing visions of Thorn, and then another vision of the Helmet of Mercury, saying it gives him a calming feeling, but he doesn't know why. Bruce starts to question if Barry is hiding something from him, and Barry runs out of the room saying he'll update Bruce later, thinking to himself, if Bruce wasn't Batman, he'd make one hell of an interrogator. The Flash goes to the Justice League's watchtower and thinks to himself he also didn't tell Bruce that Thorne's body was testing high in the same amount of unknown radiation found on the button, but much more than what the button itself could have given off. Flash goes to the Hall of Lost and Found. Well, that's what Hal Jordan calls it, at least. It's a place where the Justice League stores its rare artifacts and gadgets they recover on their missions, as Flash is here looking for something. He also wishes he had brought the bloody pin here, as it led to Thorne attacking Bruce, and then Barry thinks back to when Wally West first returned, and Wally had mentioned that he could sense and feel the presence that changed their time, also saying that the presence is much stronger than Darkseid himself, and that they are watching and waiting to attack us, but then he wonders why. Barry was about to use something he swore he would never use again, but felt like he needed to, and he knew that Wally West wouldn't like the idea, so he didn't invite him along. He also didn't invite Wally because he didn't want to risk losing him either. 
Barry then removes the covers off of what he came here looking for in the back of the Hall of the Lost and Found. It's the Cosmic Treadmill, a device him and Wally use to reach speeds needed to travel back through time. And Barry notes that Thawne never needed to use it as he could travel freely through time himself. Barry knew the risk was high, as the last time he used a treadmill he created the Flashpoint Paradox, but he knew that he had to take the chance, as the risk was extremely high. Right as the Flash is about to step on the treadmill, a voice says, You think I'd let you go alone? It's Batman. He's injured and grabbing his broken ribs, but Batman won't let that or Barry trying to talk him out of it stop him from helping his friend on their case. Barry explains to Batman that in the past he knew where he was going and that this time he's tracking the button's unique radiation, so it will be like catching a snowflake in a blizzard. Barry knew there was no use trying to stop Batman from joining him, so he told Bruce to hold on, and then the two of them took off and entered the Speed Force. Once inside the Speed Force, things got hectic quick as a storm within the Speed Force is causing high turbulence and the Flash notes that he's never seen anything like this. Just then, we are shown images of the original Justice League's founding after their fight with Starro. Barry then saying, that's not how we founded our Justice League, and Batman's questions if these are from alternate realities. Barry replies telling Bruce that Wally West told him about years being taken away from their lives, and that he thinks these are from their universe. Then we are shown the events of Crisis on Infinite Earths, where... Barry Allen died. It was later in 2008 where we found out in Final Crisis that Barry was really running in the Speed Force away from the Black Racer, who is Death the Speedsters. The Black Racer was chasing Barry the whole time until Final Crisis when the Wally West Flash helped save Barry Allen from the Black Racer. Crisis on Infinite Earth was a 1985 through 1986 DC story which served as DC's first attempt at a light reboot to make things easier to follow and tie off a few loose strings, and Final Crisis was a similar event in 2008 and 2009. The storm within the Speed Force is getting closer and appears to be dragging Barry and Bruce towards it. We must run faster, Barry yells out, then a crack boom! Batman and the Flash are sent flying. They're trying their hardest to hold on to the treadmill. Then a crash as they land, and the treadmill is destroyed. Batman appears to know where they landed. It's an early setup of the Batcave that seems to be from the time Bruce spent patrolling the streets of Gotham before the cape and the cow. Then Batman notices something is off. The gun Joe Chill used to kill Bruce's parents was on display in a glass case in the Batcave that Bruce said he never recovered that gun. Then, Bruce sees a reflection of Batman in the glass, and then he, we see Thomas Wayne Batman take off his cow and tell Bruce he did this all because of him. And it is there we end this issue 21 of DC Rebirth, The Flash, The Button Part 2. Batman issue 22, The Button Part 3, Flashpoint Batman Father and Son. All art, text, characters, and storylines belong to DC Comics, not me. And if you enjoy these stories, feel free to go out and support DC Comics in your local comic book shop by picking up these issues. We start the issue off with Thomas Wayne, the Batman, from the Flashpoint timeline, and the father of Bruce Wayne. He begins explaining the events that happened in the Flashpoint timeline, how he watched his son get shot, how he beat to death the man who did it, how he became the Batman. Then he talks about how Aquaman and Wonder Woman's war destroyed most of the world and how a man named The Flash came and told him this was all wrong. This wasn't the way things were supposed to be. The Flash had created this alternate timeline when he traveled through time to save his mother's killing which caused ripples across the lives of those closest to The Flash making this timeline Thomas Wayne lives in. The Flash was able to fix the timeline with the help of Thomas Wayne and bring things close to back to the way they were supposed to be. Although that also meant that the Flashpoint timeline would no longer exist. We watched in the Flashpoint as that version of the timeline was erased and swallowed by an explosion. That was the last we seen of the Flashpoint timeline. Until now, as it seems like the Flashpoint timeline was put on life support and that somehow the Flashpoint timeline still remained. We see Thomas Wayne sitting in a chair in his Batcave, wishing that this nightmare of a world would end as it was supposed to, comparing it to a patient on a surgery table who is too far gone, that it's no longer worth helping, saying it's easier to let it pass there on the table rather than to continue to cut. Apparently the wars have continued, fights, floods, and millions of deaths. Thomas thinks himself a fool for having hope he could help, 
And it seems now that the one thing Wonder Woman and Aquaman can agree on is seeing the Batman killed. We see the soldiers of the two armies coming after Thomas Wayne. They are making their way into Wayne Manor, and Thomas knows they're coming. He holds a trigger in his hands, and it looks like he's ready to die. Just then, a loud crack! It's Barry Allen and Bruce Wayne, Thomas Wayne's son, and the Batman from our Earth. Bruce seems to know where he is. It's an early setup of the Batcave. He'd know it anywhere. Ever since he fell down here as a child and his father helped him up, Bruce knows something is up and asks Barry where the hell are they. Just then, Thomas and Bruce see each other and both think this can't be real. Thomas asking Flash what is going on. Thomas thinking it's a trick grabs Barry by the neck, choking him and punching him. The Flash escapes and tells both Batmen that this is real. They are father and son. This is their Earth, not another world, and that something or someone seems to be keeping this Flashpoint timeline alive, almost as though it's being held in place. It's like this world is a ghost here to haunt them, as it should no longer exist. Thomas questions why Bruce can't even look at him, and then Barry mentions that they need to rebuild the cosmic treadmill so they can all escape the Flashpoint. Thomas says you best make it quick. Barry, with a smirk on his face, says should be done in about a minute, and then asks why. Just then, Wonder Woman and Aquaman soldiers enter the Batcave, ready to kill the three of them. Thomas pulls out his gun, ready to fight, telling Bruce and Barry to get away from here and he'll handle this. Bruce throws a batarang, knocking the gun out of Thomas's hand, telling him that they will all get out together. Bruce asks his father if this Batcave has defense plans. Thomas jokingly says, Thinking ahead was always more of your mother's thing, Bruce. And then, the two Batmen pull down their cows, ready to fight with their fists. We see two Batmen, Thomas and Bruce Wayne, father and son, fighting back to back, smashing Aquaman and Wonder Woman soldiers as the Flash is building a new cosmic treadmill as fast as he can. As Barry finishes and all the soldiers are defeated, Bruce and Thomas talk about the time Bruce fell down in this cave as a boy, and Thomas asking Bruce if he remembered what he told him. Then Bruce tells Thomas he remembers him whispering to him because he didn't want to scare the bats. Just then, Barry tells Thomas and Bruce that we all have to go. The treadmill is powered up and it will leave without them. All of a sudden, we see the world begin to erase the way it did at the end of the Flashpoint event. A light erasing everything. Barry then asks the two if they felt that, saying it feels like whatever was holding this timeline in place just let go. Bruce tells Thomas he never thought he would be able to answer him and said there's one thing he's always wanted to tell Thomas ever since Barry gave Bruce Flashpoint Batman's note. It's that Thomas is a grandfather. Bruce has a son, Damian Wayne. Barry yells out, Batman, the treadmill is leaving now, with or without me running on it. We have to leave now. Bruce tries to talk Thomas into coming, but Thomas has long since accepted his fate, and he pushes Bruce onto the treadmill. Thomas telling Barry to keep his promise of saving his son. With the treadmill fully powered up and about to leave the flashpoint behind, Thomas tells Bruce everything in his life was the right choice because it led to Bruce, his son, and then he tells Bruce to live his life. Give Damien the life he couldn't give Bruce. Let the Batman die with me, Thomas says, then a crack! And Bruce and Barry are gone. Thomas thinks back to that day. Bruce fell down into the cave. What he told his son. Sometimes we fall. But to always remember. To never stay down. Because Wayne's rise. And then Thomas puts on his cowl. And runs towards the light. Seemingly accepting his face. And facing it head on. As the flashpoint is totally erased. Then we see Bruce and Barry in the speed force. Running through time. Bruce demanding. We go back. But Barry telling him, there's nothing to go back to. It's all gone. Then asking why the button's radiation led them there in the first place. To see my father, Bruce says. But why, Barry replies, saying while he told him, this presence took time and relationships from them all to hurt them all and weaken them. Just then, we see someone close behind them in the speed force, and it's Eobard Thorn. But how could that be? We just saw the reverse flash die in Batman issue 21, the button part one. After he grabbed the button, then in a flash of light said he saw God and then died before Batman. Bruce notices that he still has the button in his hand. This must be before he died, Bruce says. Barry then saying how the speed force must have placed them there on purpose. Barry tries to stop Thorn, telling him that if he keeps running, he'll die. The reverse flash yells back to them. They have no idea what he's seen or where he's been and that he knows who the power of the button belongs to, and he's eager to face it, saying, You've never faced anything like him before. 
And just like that, the issue ends. The button part three is over. What will happen in issue four of the button? Flash issue 22, the button part four. The button part four from DC Rebirth. All art, text, characters, and storylines belong to DC Comics, not me. And if you enjoy these stories, feel free to go out and support DC Comics in your local comic book shop. I watch them race across time as it all falls apart. Shouting at them yet, I'm as silent as a ghost and forgotten like one too. Barry Allen is the key. He brought Wally West back, and now it's my turn. An unknown voice narrates to us. We start this issue out right where we left off with the button part three. Barry Allen and Batman are chasing after the reverse flash as he continues to run through time towards the source of the button's power. Barry calls out to Thawne, I've seen your future! If you keep following that trail, whatever you're running to, it will kill you! Ha <laughs> ha! My future, Thorn says to Barry, like the day you broke my neck, or the night you watched Batman's father slide a sword into my back. Empty threats. I'm a living paradox. There's no future or past till I decide to put it all back together. Just then, a loud crack, and a white lightning bolt strikes near them in the speed force. Thorn! Barry cries out, but Thorn doesn't care, as he tells Barry, The last time I shaped your life, Flash, I murdered your mother and sent you into a sea of despair. And when I get the power of the button source, he will change so much more. We hear a voice tell Barry that he's here, and Batman asks Barry if he also heard someone calling to Barry. Barry replies to Batman, telling him any visions or voices he is hearing are from moments that could have been, but weren't. Barry tells Bruce he's already heard his mother's voice, and Iris's call out to him too, but assures Bruce that if he listens to them, he could get pulled into an error that is now lost. Bruce tells Barry his father was no vision. He was real. The voice again calls out to Barry. Reverse Flash then tells Barry that the night his mother dies, Thorn will be there as a social worker or family friend, maybe a close neighbor, and that Thorn will take young Barry in and raise him as his son and make Barry Thorn's acolyte. Then a loud boom, and lightning strikes the cosmic treadmill. Barry and Bruce are running on, and Barry tells Bruce to hang on. Bruce tells Barry they need to land somewhere, but Barry says we need to stop Thorn from... Then the reverse flash says, you're too late, Barry. You're always too late. I'm here. Your life is about to be undone. I have arrived, Thorn says, as he has reached the source of the button's power. You don't have to be shy. I can feel your presence, like a wave of static electricity. It's powerful, I'll admit. In fact, I've never encountered anything like this. You've done such strange things to the timeline, things I wouldn't even begin to question, and you've remained hidden from them all, but I'm not like them. Thorn says with rage in his eyes, My existence is the only constant in a sea of possibilities. I cannot be erased, not by you or anyone. Show yourself. Thorn yells while holding the button in his hands. Just then, a blue light begins to surround the reverse flash, and Thorn then sees his mistake in coming here. My God! Thorn cries out with fear. Wait! Wait! I didn't know! Please! I don't want to die! Thorn cries out at the source of the power that stands before him, but it's too late for Thorn as the blue light eats away at him and tears Thorn apart, turning him into a skeleton. Barry asked Bruce if he heard the screams. Barry said, Thorn is gone. Then the voice calls out to Barry again, telling Barry that he's here. Everything is falling apart around Bruce and Barry, and it's trying to pull them both in as they hang on for dear life. As the cosmic treadmill falls apart and is being sucked into the speed force, Barry tells Bruce that without the cosmic treadmill, he has no traction to run them out of here. The voice calls out again, saying, Barry's name. Bruce tells Barry to listen to the voice and grab onto it. Barry replies to Batman, telling him, We have no idea where it's going to take us. Batman tells Barry, We don't have any other choice. We see a white lightning again, and it's a voice telling Barry, He's right here. Just say my name, Jay. Barry, confused, says the name, Jay, and the treadmill is now completely destroyed. Bruce and Barry are both now being sucked into the speed force with nothing to hold on to. Just then, a crack, and a white lightning strikes, and suddenly, we see Jay Garrick is here, the first Flash from the Golden Age of Comics, and he is free. Jay Garrick grabs both Bruce and Barry and tells them both to hang on as he runs through the speed force with the two in his arms. Enough power to get you home! 
with another crackoom. Jay sends Barry and Bruce back to the Batcave, where this all began. The decayed body of the Reverse Flash is there with them. The Speed Force seems to be drawing Jay back into wherever he once was before this, as energy surrounds Jay and begins pulling him away, erasing him once more. Barry asks Jay who he is, and if he was the one who killed Thawne. I didn't kill anyone, Jay says. My name is Jay Garrick, and I'm your friend, Barry, and I'm also a Flash. Jay keeps fading away even more as he tells Barry to listen and remember me, saying, If you remember me like Wally! Barry replies to Jay that Wally told Barry he would forget things and people, asking Jay, Who did this to him? They took everything from me, Barry. I don't know how and I don't know why. Barry, you have to... Jay says with his last words, and with a kss, the blue light grabs a hold of Jay, and suddenly, Jay Garrick is gone. All that remains is a zap and a cloud of smoke. What happened? Barry asked Bruce, confused. That man said he knew me, the same way Wally West did. But he's not here. Maybe he came from another time, one that no longer exists, Bruce says. And Barry replies saying, yeah, maybe, as the two of them switch their focus to Thorne's decayed body. And Barry thinks to himself, I must not be able to be the lightning bolt that Jay needs. Later on, we see Bruce Wayne and Barry Allen in a graveyard, visiting the graves of Bruce Wayne's parents, Thomas and Martha Wayne. You're the one of the only other persons I know who's suffered loss like I have, and who has also seen a glimpse of the alternative, like a moment of hope, a boyhood dream. It's almost a cruel joke, Bruce says to Barry. I think of it as a gift, Barry says to his friend Bruce. Barry says to Bruce, I wonder if this was all Thawne's doing. Time ruptures, changing people, fading in and out of reality, like your father and the other Flash. Bruce cuts off Barry by saying, he died! Barry replies, but maybe his death triggered all of this. Maybe there is no one else to chase. I can appreciate you wanting to close this case, Barry, but it's far from closed, Bruce says. Barry replies by telling Bruce, so, what, the primary suspect who murdered Thawne is God? For now, that's what we have to go on, if we pursue this case, Bruce says with some doubt in his demeanor. The two friends walk out of the graveyard, and Barry tells Bruce that he's going to do an autopsy on Thorne's body and see what else he can find. I don't pretend to understand what we just went through, Barry, but what we experienced wasn't an accident. Being given the chance to see my father, only to lose him again? And that other Flash, who said he was your friend? And we were both powerless to help him. Also, what Reverse Flash said... Right before he died, how he saw God? I don't know, Barry. It can't all be by accident, Bruce says to Barry. We are then shown the Earth from space, and there seems to be a blue light looming over Earth. Then we see Bruce Wayne looking out the window at his house, and he thinks to himself what his father told him. Don't be Batman. Find happiness. You don't have to do this for me. Don't do it for your mother. Let Batman die with me. As Bruce is thinking about his father's advice, the bat signal shines bright into the night sky over Gotham City skyline, and Alfred asks Bruce if he's going to answer that. Bruce, with a heavy heart and doubt in his life as Batman, hangs his head low and doesn't answer the call. Back in the unknown location where the reverse flash chased the source of the button's power to and was killed by the blue light, we see the bloody button that started this all, and then the hand of Dr. Manhattan grabs the button off the ground, and he says, Why does my perception of time distress you? Everything is preordained, even my responses. We're all puppets, Laurie. I'm just a puppet who can see the strings. Then, in a quick epilogue, we see the button drifting through space, and we see a damaged shield of Superman, and we get a quote from August Dreinberg. There are poisons that blind you, and poisons that open your eyes. And then we are shown the recently announced next major event in DC Rebirth, Doomsday Clock, which will be handled by Jeff Johns, Gary Frank, and Brad Anderson, and will start this coming November. The Button, Part 4, script by Joshua Williamson, art by Howard Porter, letters by Steve Wands, cover by Jason Fabic and Brad Anderson, High Five Errant cover by Howard Porter, assistant editor, Amundo Torito, editor, Brian Cunningham, special thanks to Jeff Johns and Tom King. Comic published by DC Comics. All rights, story, art, and characters are owned by DC Comics and their respective owners. Not me. This has been The Flash Rebirth, issue 22, The Button, part 4. And I'm your host, Keith OneShot. If you like this video, make sure to support DC Comics and pick up a copy of the trades or single-issue comics. Support your local comic book shop, take care, and have a great day. Goodbye!